Welcome to The One Who Seeks, where you are the one who seeks. My name is Tara. I am your intuitive tarot reader. I use tarot as a tool to open up the channels of your intuition. By tapping into your unawakened subconscious, you will answer the questions that you seek. I am not a psychic, although it may seem like it sometimes. Take what resonates and leave the rest. Always remember, the freedom of choice is your power. Only you can make it happen with your actions. What are you seeking? Hello and welcome to The One Who Seeks, where you are the one who seeks. What are you seeking? Okay, so I'm gonna dab my pure love. My sprayer doesn't work. And we're going to spray the let go. Okay. Spirit of loving nature, please guide us in this collective reading for our highest good and for the good of others. Let me be a clear and open channel for the messages coming through. This reading is timeless. Take what resonates and leave the rest. Okay, so I wanted to start off. Um, I have these dreams all the time, all right? Uh, where I'm packing stuff up. And so um, I kind of went through and looked up what all the meetings were. So uh, I just want to start off the reading with this. So packing in my dreams, can't find stuff, uh, annoying, frantic, frustrated. Um, so the meanings I found is that I'm heading in the right, down the right path. Um, well, feeling frustrated and stressed out can put forward different approaches to a current life situation. Stressful situations can't improve like a troubled relationship or a nerve wracking working environment. A sense of anticipation and preparation, letting go and making room for new beginnings. You are closing the chapter in your life and moving on. All right, so, um, and then I have a note here as I was packing and putting away stuff in the RV yesterday, trying to put away anything that I'm not using right now and putting away the fire important files from the truck. So, you know, there's all these fires that are going around um, here in Oroville, which is pretty close to me. And so I had packed up a bunch of stuff and put it in our truck, uh, all of our files and stuff that we need. All right, and then in my dream, uh, I was missing my eyeglasses and my jean shorts. Okay, I was trying to pack up. I couldn't find these. I felt like who I was with maybe have stolen them from me and um, was getting really frustrated. I was about to take a shower and uh, I don't know, I guess I decided to go look for my clothes or whatever and started packing and I couldn't find them. So it's like a feeling of being vulnerable and uh, realizing that I was going back to my RV. And so it's really hard for me to shower in my RV. So um, I was trying to get a shower in, a nice good shower <laughs> before I came back home. And I couldn't find my eyeglasses and Missing eyeglasses in a dream is a sign that we need help from something or someone external. Eyeglasses are a social status. Observing things from a new perspective or is no longer able to focus on them exactly or has naturally or voluntarily overcome some inner mechanisms of perception. The need to view things from an open heart and clear eyes to be intelligent, responsible, or careful in a situation, difficulty resolving a problem, saying we don't fully grasp what really should be clear, distorted perception or a shattered perspective on a situation or a relationship, 
feeling exposed as if their ability to see clearly has been compromised. Okay, and I was also missing my jean shorts. Um, it uh, means a fear of judgment, insecurities, or a perceived lack of worthiness. Uh, anxieties about trying to fit in or being well suited for your changing role. Feeling vulnerable like an outsider, insecurities, looking for deeper fulfillment. And then jeans themselves mean relaxing, like a relaxed fit jean, right? So, um, having all these insecurities about fitting in with these changing roles and um, needing to relax, right? And put on some clothes so that I'm not so vulnerable. So, um, that might be part of the message today. We'll find out here in a second. But I really wanted to share that. I have this, these reoccurring dreams always like as long as I can remember I'm constantly packing up stuff um I'm not always in the same place it's not always the same situation it's not always the same things that I'm packing sometimes I'm packing a bag sometimes I'm packing a box um but it always seems to be pretty frustrating like I, I run out of time I can't finish packing or I can't find things. And so I always kind of wake up with this like frustrated feeling, right? So um, let's see what spirit has to say for us today. Okay, I'd like to invite in the angels of loving energy in all the different realms for your highest good and for the good of others for your protection let me be a clear and open channel for the messages coming through for the collective now, i don't even know if i've already done this prayer or not because i got so deep into talking about my dream that i can't even remember what i've already said right and so this is why i did choose the pure love and the letting go sprays um so love yourself, love others, let go what you don't need. Um, you know, pack away things that are, you aren't using that are cluttering up your space, cluttering up your mind. Okay. All right, spirit, what do you want us to know today for the collective? Thank you all for being here with me at One Who Seeks. If you haven't already, subscribe, set up your notifications so you never miss a reading. Like this reading right now, <laughs> before you've even seen it. Um, it really helps the algorithm to, um, to share my videos with others when you hit that like button um, on YouTube. And share it with others, please, please, please. Support support your um i want to say local but you might not be local um you know support others you know this is life shouldn't be about a competition uh it should be about supporting each other so uh, i really appreciate it if you can support me and all the hard work that i've been putting into this and all the studying and um you know by liking and sharing and subscribing you are collaborating with me in a way vibrationally okay and that's why you're here because you connect with me vibrationally you're part of my soul family okay the vision so this almost reminds me of the world card we kind of have that endings and new beginnings and we have the owls, right? And owls are about death and rebirth. And then we have here, um, what do you call that? The, the serpent skin of the snake, where it's um, in the circle here. And we have hands that are clasping 
with each other, right? With this is part of that unity and part of that soul family being part of something bigger than yourself. And then we have the mountains in the background. It looks like there's even a, um, a small campfire here in the middle of the woods, right? We have all these beautiful colors. Uh, this kind of looks like a penny, maybe? Some sort of a gold medallion, right? And um, actually before the campfire <laughs> here in paradise, in 2018, um, my interior design company that I had just started in June, the campfire was in November, uh, was, my name was Lucky Penny Interiors. So that reminds me of that. And like I've mentioned before, interior design for me means decluttering your space to declutter your mind for, for healing, right? And feeling comfortable in your space. And something that's personalized to you. Okay, and then looking at this, so we have a bunch of deer here in the yards. And um, there's this mama. She just ran uh, into our yard yesterday while we were outside. She has two brand new babies and the poor mama has a broken foot. Her back foot is broken. And I almost felt like they came over to kind of ask for help. Um, we do have a little creek in the backyard there. So they were able to get water. And I did cut up some apples and put them out for her and her babies, uh, kind of where they nest next door. So I just kind of remind me of that um, because of all, all the animals during the wildfire and the struggles that they had to go through. Right. And we have trees here and um, we're at a lack of trees and probably cut down about 27 trees in our property after the fire. So we don't really have any shade. I do have about five trees left. Um, two of them are big, beautiful redwoods that do allow a little bit of shade um, in the late afternoon. But other than that, um, we're pretty exposed here and it is hot AF. Okay. It's a hundred plus it's 111. It's 115, you know, so we're in between those. And um, right now I have my air conditioner off and I just have the fan on because it's so loud um, while I'm trying to do this reading, but it is getting warm in here, right? The father, look, we have like that penny again. So my motto for Lucky Penny Interiors was, um, happiness, health, and wealth, right? Find a penny, pick it up all day long, have good luck. And once again, we have the tree and that one almost looks like the redwoods there. And we have the, um, the contrast of both sides, right? How beautiful it was before and kind of the reckoning of what has happened. And it's, it's kind of, um, in the past, right? And it does look like this is a, a different penny or the other side of the penny. Like when you flip a coin, heads or tails. And the father is like God, source. Um, you know, ultimately divinely guiding this, right? For the vision. All right, and the star born. And we have a cracking egg. So being reborn or being born, right? Breaking out of that shell, emerging. And we have this beautiful background. I love the background on here. 
it's almost like a watercolor and it's like the galaxy with stars and we know we have two three so we're progressing here i don't know what lv is um roman numerals let's see let me look it up lv roman numerals that's 55 okay and um Yeah, okay. So 55, five is about changes. And since it's doubled, uh, I feel like there's a lot of changes that are coming through. The Eternal Child, IV, right? Which once again, I think that's a four, which is foundation. Uh, is it a four? Is it V? I think X is the five. Um, I really gotta learn my Roman numerals here. Um, but the eternal child, right? So we were just born and we're growing up here and we have our father who is helping us out. Interesting. So that. Ah, okay. So 55. It looks like it. it's showing me. No. Okay. So Ivy there. Okay. Interesting. So I'm trying to Google this and it is four. And it, it automatically showed me this. After looking LV up, it showed me IV right underneath it when, you know, it drops down. So this is about foundations. Okay, and maybe like the foundation of your childhood and how you were raised. You know, and the star born is like um, you know, a star seed, somebody that's very special who is brought here for a specific reason for healing on this earth and for teaching messages. The flame, L-I, right? And um, we do have this flame here of this little campfire in the middle of the woods. And I feel like this is the perspective of actually being in front of that fire. This is a candle though. This is not a, um, a campfire. It's just one little flame, right? But as your starborn star seed, lighting this flame is really bright in this darkness. Because this is like right in the middle of the mountains and look how bright it is for being one candle. All right, let's see what it is, L-I. 51. So that's a six if you add them together in numerology. And six is about harmony. Okay, and the self. Okay, and we have this same kind of prism going on here. And when you light your candle and shine your light to the world for your vision, it creates this beautiful prism of a rainbow. This is even a pearl here. Okay, so you're shining out your light to the rest of the world and it's coming from your heart. It's coming from within to shine out, right? And then we even have like a pyramid here uh, it could be something about uh, the Egyptian pyramids or like just the prism of light. Um, <laughs> what was it? Uh, I just saw a meme on Facebook. I reposted uh, where do rainbows go? 
when they get in trouble and they go to prism. Um, <laughs> what was it? Oh my gosh, it was pretty funny. I can't remember the whole joke, but they go to prism, something about uh, shining their light. Um, oh man, it'll take me too long to look it up, I think. Let's see. Well, let's see if I can find it. Oh, here it is. Okay. Where do bad rainbows go? To prism. It's a light sentence, but it gives them time to reflect. <laughs> okay. It's like so stupid that it's great. I love it. Okay. Um, <laughs> right. So this is about reflecting and taking that time to kind of shield yourself from whatever is going on around you in the world. Right. Cause we have this prism here again with the self. This is your inner child. Right. So when you were born, like all the things that you've gone through, Okay, 21, three, creativity. Always maintain only a joyful mind, right? And that's like the inner child, right? Children are always like so joyful. I mean, let's say you're living in just a horrific lifestyle, you know, with their parents, um, are usually pretty joyful. They are innocent, right? Like ignorance is bliss. Like the more you know, the more insane you kind of feel. Um, commentary. Okay. Constantly apply cheerfulness if for no other reason than because you are on the spiritual path. Have a sense of gratitude to everything, even difficult emotions, because of their potential to wake you up. Interesting, right? Because I'm just talking about dreams. And, and then waking up and feeling frustrated, right? Um, and then I was even saying something about, like, if you're not raised in a good family, it's hard for you to have, be joyful. So even with difficult emotions, still have that sense of gratitude, right? For everything that has happened to you. You know, even with the, the campfire, it, it brought in new opportunities for um, my family me and my husband and my dogs to travel and explore half of this country and look for somewhere else to go even though we ended up coming back in the end uh it seemed to be the best decision for us financially and also uh for job opportunities for my husband because he grew up here and so he has worked with several people over the years and um he felt like that's this is the only place that he could get a job so we did end up coming back here and we are rebuilding it's taking a really long time it's really long and drawn out um we started this i guess a year and a half ago and, uh, you know, it's small steps, baby steps, one step at a time, uh, hurry up and wait, being responsible, taking care of getting permits and plans and gathering some of our friends to help us out. Okay. Don't be frivolous. So this was on the top and I did shuffle this. See, once again, there's something about me shuffling things and still pulling out the same cards that were either on top or that I have picked yesterday, um, things like that, right? So things coming back, no matter what you do, right? How much you shuffle it. And, um, 
try to rearrange it, it still comes back. 58, so eight, nine, 13, that's a four. So once again, we have foundation. Don't be frivolous. Commentary, don't waste your precious time. You never know how long you have, right? And so I'm just talking about how long it's taking for everything, right? Even with me doing this YouTube channel and studying tarot in depth, it, it's taking a really long time, right? Uh, and just like in my dreams where I'm constantly packing it, it's like, it takes me so long. It's like the entire night, I just have this dream of where I'm constantly packing and it never stops and I'm never fully packed, right? There's always going to be something on that checkoff list that needs to be done. That list is never going to be complete, but I do feel like, you know, I'm running out of time, right? And I don't want to waste any of this time. And so I feel like I should be doing so much in a day, but I'm stressing myself out at the same time when I really just need to sit back and kind of relax a little bit and have fun with it and play with it, right? Okay, let's get into some tarot. Okay, I'm using my angel deck, my angel tarot. Um, because I'm having all these dreams and I feel like the angels are guiding me. I decided to use this deck. Ten of Wands. Uh, God humbling the proud. 53. That's an 8. Nan... Nan... Nana... Nana L. Nana L. Uh -huh. Spiritual communication influences religious men, teachers, and men of law. All right, and we have Father here when I was talking about uh, could be God or Source as well. So, um, spiritual communication influences religious men, teachers, and men of law. God humbling the proud. Uh, this is about like dropping your ego. Uh, ten of wands. So ten is endings and new beginnings. And wands are very fast movement about your passions. You know, almost like magic, right? Queen of Pentacles. Me. Bahia. 55. We had 55 already, uh, which was the vision, I believe. And the external God. So things that are outside of you, right? So like in my dreams, um, says something about needing help externally. Intellectual lucidity provides Consolation and compensations. Okay, and the Queen of Pentacles. Um, somebody who is very nurturing with their spirituality and or material things on this earth. You know, your finances, the things that you own. Um, and it looks like she's even like hushing somebody. She's like holding her hand out and shh, shh. Right, quieting your mind, quieting your spirit. The tower. Uh, Uriel, the fire of God. Disruption warns of disasters, aids in transformation. Okay, um, 
this chair up here has a scroll and a sword. Swords are about the mind and uh, scrolls are like intellect. And this cherub looks very like kind of angry about it. <laughs> right? So like I was saying, ignorance is bliss. Right? Maybe because it's like this cherub is a child. And um, is like trying to quiet his mind. Because of all this information that's come in. And a tower is something that... Um, happens suddenly, unexpectedly, because the foundation is crumbling. Queen of Wands, Elamaya, the hidden god. This is a four. This is foundation. Okay. Divine power guards against mental troubles. Yeah, I was just literally saying that here with the cherub. So here, here they are protecting themselves with their wings. Right? Hush, quiet the mind. Um, this is almost like a graduation here. You know, um, they got the little like feather in their hand, like a feather pen, like a scroll, uh, or uh, I can't think of what they call that. Um, and then the wreath that goes over the head is like deeming you like graduated, right? Um, so protecting yourself from your, your own mind and hushing it and quieting it down, which could mean, you know, meditation as well, or um, some sort of a graduation. could even be a wedding. Yeah, this, um, this wreath here reminds me of a wedding and writing out contracts. And maybe protecting yourself from something. Eight of Wands, the Huel, the great and exalted God. This is 49, 13, which is a four foundation again. Uh, grandeur makes one passionate towards God. Okay, and they're playing the um, violin here. Um, something about the music, listening to the music, right? Hush down to hear this music. And this could even be a scroll of um, uh, reading music. <laughs> and then, you know, you kind of have like covering of the ears. Maybe it's not that great because you're still in the infancy of learning how to play this music. And it doesn't sound so great. <laughs> and so um, you here are like, oh my gosh, quiet it down, please. This is like making me crazy. I can't think. I can't listen here. Um and then we have the moon, Gabriel, God is my strength. Divine revelation reveals messages, has the power to destroy. Okay, so, you know, when you learn something new, it kind of destroys an old part of you. Right? And the moon is about... Uh, things that are unseen that need to be illuminated. Okay. Eight of Wands is uh, infinity manifestation of your passions, of moving forward. Six of Wands and and a UL, uh, 63, 9. This is about wisdom. And right before things are starting anew, the gentle God, perception of unity protects against accidents, heals the sick. Interesting, it says perception of unity. Um, as if it's not really there. You just have a perception of it. It's kind of like me connecting with you right now. 
right? It's a perception of unity because I've, I haven't actually met you. Maybe I have met you. Um, if you're, you know, part of my friends and family who are watching these and thank you for doing that. I appreciate your support. Um, but most of you, I don't know, you know, it's just a perception that you are there. Um, and if you're not liking or commenting or subscribing, then I really don't know that you're there. You really are just kind of a, an illusion, right? Cause I can kind of see how many hours are being watched or what videos are being watched. But if you aren't liking it or commenting on it, I don't necessarily see you, even if it is resonating with you. Uh, six of swords, six is harmony and swords is about the mind. So having harmony with your mind. Okay. And, um, <laughs> so once again, I see like, okay, cut it out. Stop. Stop. Like you're separating somebody maybe, or like I've had enough. Stop. And then it kind of looks like she's about to bitch slap you. <laughs> you know, this is an angel. This is the gentle God. But then again, it looks like it's like, shut up, smack across the face. Right. Um, heals the sick, protects against accidents. Okay, Ace of Wands, Omega, 30, which is about creativity, who is, which is divine, uh, divinely guided by God, by source, uh, the patient God. Um, fertility and multiplicity protects against despair, helps one be patient. Hmm. Maybe something I, I'm like hearing, you know, having a, a child helps one to be patient, which is like totally opposite. You know, I feel like if you have a child, um, there's sometimes a lot of impatience. Uh, I guess it depends on what kind of a parent you are and how much you like children. Um, you know, I'm particularly not one who is drawn to children. It's not like I inherently love children and want to be around children. It's not that I dislike children necessarily, um, you know, and for some reason, children are always drawn to me. Um, but it's not necessarily something that I am seeking out into the world. Right. You know, if it happens, it happens and I will take it with love and gratitude. Um, but I am not necessarily seeking it out. Right. So something about maybe learning about your patients. Right. Because here you're like fed up or, you know, this really this line is about somebody else. This is you. This is someone else. And um so I think this is like about you being patient with someone and it doesn't even necessarily have to be a child, but we do have a lot of, um, child aspects in here, the eternal child, the born, the father, um, the self, the flame and the vision. So this could be a father with their child and they need to be a little bit more patient with them learning and how they think and how they play, right? Maybe they're really loud and you're trying to get some work done. Maybe you work from home and they're being really loud and they're learning new things and it's frustrating you because um, it's distracting you from what you're doing. And you need to learn to have that patience. And, um, here again, see, this is very similar to this, where now we are crowning this person with an actual crown, 
rather than this wreath. And there's a flower in the hand instead of a feather. Okay, and um, the clothes have, are falling off here. So this is vulnerability. Being vulnerable. And um, like shedding your skin, right? Or shedding that clothing of like who you used to be, you know, before you had children. And now this is a different aspect. Okay, Ace of Wands is a gift. A gift of your, your passion. And moving forward quickly. Okay, uh, I would like to know about the relationship here. Two of Swords. And, and, and I know, and no. 37, 8, 9, 10. So that is endings and new beginnings at 10. Uh, God, Lord of all virtues. Breaking the circle lifts opposing barriers, brings a victory. Right? And so the very first card we had of vision was like the world card, which is endings and new beginnings and breaking the circle. Right? Because there was that circle in the world card. Um, so it lifts opposing barriers and brings victory. So I feel like in this relationship, you are going to become very patient with your child. And you might not have had some patience before. Uh, it is teaching you some new things about life. The Two of Swords is about unity and the way you were thinking. And you were coming together with your child. Um maybe to help with this graduation of learning, right? Ten of Pentacles, Manadel, 36. This is a nine, this is about wisdom, the honorable God. Inner and outer work helps one keep their job, protects against disasters. <laughs> right, so like I just said, it, you might be working from home. And uh, so it's the inner and the outer work which helps keep their job, right? Protects against disasters. So if this child is being unruly and you're trying to work from home and they're making a lot of noise, uh, you might be worried about your job and whether or not you're able to keep your job if you can't get any work done. Okay, and then here, it's like she's floating. Um, is really like meditating and keeping the mind down so that you don't react in a negative way towards this child who is trying to learn, right? Which is what children do. They learn and they play. And they're not always going to be great right away, right? They're not going to play this music, pick up a, an instrument and just know how to play it. It's going to take some time and some practice. And it's not going to be great all the time. But eventually, with the help of you, your the father, or the parent, or source, divine God, uh, they're going to get better over time. Right? And I see them kind of like standing on the world here now. And uh, lifting up that mind here. And shielding themselves from any kind of danger. Um, they are standing on the world. I mean, this is just a spear, a, a spear, uh, it might not necessarily be earth, but I feel like in this aspect, it is like they are on top of the world now. Um, and they can only become that way with your help, right? Four of pentacles. Uh, my real or real 60. So this is harmony divided by God, God liberating the oppressed self anointment cures, mental illness, deliverance from prosecution, persecution. Okay. So, you know, you are, the parent you are the father here 
uh, somebody that is like above you, right? Um, telling you what to do, guiding you. The Four of Pentacles, this is definitely very stable. Uh, the Four is foundation. Pentacles is also about home, things that you own, uh, your spirituality. It's also the slowest moving. Um, you know, and as a child, like I've always felt really oppressed as a child. Um, like I never did anything right. Um, wasn't able to learn very well. Like I have learning disabilities. I don't, you know, <laughs> looking up autism on the internet and came to a realization that I might actually be autistic and I've had a lot of learning disabilities throughout my life and I've been put into uh, special classes to where you know there's only maybe four other people in a class and uh, get kind of that one-on-one -on -one time with a mentor to help me get past my disabilities uh, mostly in reading which you know obviously you can tell from me trying to read the names of these gods um, or math like I'm really like I have this weird relationship with math where like I kind of love it and kind of get it sometimes and then other times it's like I hate it it makes me cry uh, I am a little dyslexic so I do switch my numbers and my letters um, you know, I've always been kind of different, as my mom would call it, and felt kind of like the black sheep of the family, right? And feeling very frustrated that I'm not able to learn as quickly or in the same way as somebody else who is like just catching on and seems very smart and intelligent, uh, but maybe they had a better structure at home where it felt more um i can't even think of the word see um like somebody helping you out having that support and really feeling seen for who they are and what their struggles are Okay, and this is you liberating that child, right? The mental illness. You know, I feel like I kind of have like a mental illness and now I have PTSD from the fire. And I feel like I lost a part of me during that time that is really hard to come back. Like my brain doesn't work as well anymore. Like words just don't come to me as easily. Um, like it was never really easy for me anyway, but it's like even harder for me now. And it's been five and a half years, almost six years um, since that fire. And I still feel like I have not fully come back. I'm still stuck in this survival mode, which I've pretty much always been in, but this is like, a higher extent of it. Judgment. Uh, em, emania? Emana? 52. That's a 7. That's spirituality. God hidden in darkness. Um, atonement of errors destroys the power of enemies in humanity and humiliates them destroys the power of enemies and humiliates them right so whoever is like holding you down and making you feel like you're judged because of these disabilities this mental illness that you have uh god is going to step in and remove them from your life Okay. God is standing in the darkness. You can't necessarily see him. You might be able to feel him. Oh, and, we, and then I was drawn to the hidden God here as well. So I feel like the parent, like you, 
are the hidden God standing in the darkness, watching your child grow from the darkness. And maybe uh, I feel like you need to come out of that darkness and into the light to let this child know that you are there for them. So they don't have to feel like they're struggling so much. Um, it almost looks like <laughs> this angel is flipping somebody off. They are holding this cup here. Um, but their finger looks like they're flipping somebody off, like in the background, like holding this cup, right? So maybe this is you protecting your child from a teacher or some bullies or something at school who are harassing your child and you are nourishing them with this cup, whatever's in this cup that you're going to offer your child, but are like saying, fuck those other people, don't worry about it. I am here for you. Um, I'm here to nurture you. Okay, um, in the situation here, let's see. Okay, and then we have humiliating again, and we have humiliates them. So from the beginning to the end, there's some hum humiliation going on. Let's see here. Um, the situation is spiritual communication and um, becoming passionate towards God. Let's see, breaking the cycle and victory, right? So um, if you really open yourself up to source, um, these people who are humiliating you will be humiliated. They are kind of going to get a taste of their own medicine. Okay. And the things that are unseen is the eternal God because God is unseen. It's internal. It's inside of you. God is my strength, right? The honorable God, that is you. Okay. You don't realize that the God is inside of you. You are God. It's not something that is external. And this says eternal. So it's not internal. Like I'm reading it. It's everlasting. It's infinity. Okay, the strength is inside of you. You just need to be honorable. Okay, so maybe you as a father figure need to have that honor of your child. Maybe your inner child. This could be even something about your inner child. It doesn't even have to be your child. Okay, and the action that you need to take is, let's see, um, God liberating the oppressed, the gentle God, the fire of God is lighting that candle. Being gentle on yourself, being gentle on your children, liberating that oppression. transforming getting away from that sickness that mental illness
right? The disruption, dis disruption, disruption <laughs> that is going on around you um, is really like healing your sickness, your mental illness because of the patience that it is teaching you. Okay, and the outcome is this hidden God, the patient God. Okay, so I really do feel like you're going to come out really patient with yourself or with your child for the troubles, the mental troubles that are going on. Maybe that's something that you have hidden within yourself. And you show yourself as being very impatient with something, with yourself or with your child. Okay, really opening yourself up and offering something, offering your skills. Offering your, your mental capacities. Teaching them something new. And emerging from the darkness. Learning something new to emerge from this darkness. And standing in your own. And telling the world to fuck off. I'm going to be who I am. I'm going to stand in my own. I'm going to be this structure who feels very solid here. Or here, they're very light and kind of floaty. Uh, is now grounded and solid. Okay. It's okay to make mistakes. That's how we learn in life. That's how we step up to a higher being. Okay, if you didn't make, you don't make any mistakes, you're never going to learn from whatever the lesson is. That's how we become masters of our domain, of our craft, is by trying and failing over and over again and learning the right ways to do something. All right, Spirit, what else would you like to tell us about this? No need to worry. Yes. And reconsider. Okay, I'm going to read these. It is getting really hot in here. <laughs> See the sacrifices that I make for you guys because I love you and I want to get these messages out. Is I have to turn off my air conditioner in 100 plus degree weather in my RV. So that you can hear me clearly. Okay, no need to worry. Often there are situations that we fret and worry about, even when they're not out of our control. Even when they're out of our control. These situations can keep us up at night. The no need to worry card lets you know that even things... If seem, things seem dark, right? We're talking about the darkness. Hidden in the darkness. A resolution and an easing will come. Worry will not improve anything. And Drawn is just around the corner. Oh, and Dawn is just around the corner. The crack of Dawn. Waking up 
a new beginning every day. We start anew. As we sleep, we are uh, kind of shedding a part of ourselves and renewing ourselves. Okay, and it's gonna get easier, but don't worry about it. Don't fret on it. If you have this mental illness, I feel like the worry is that I have a mental illness. <clears throat> okay, yes. This is a clear, strong, positive response to your question. And while I don't really have a question here, <laughs> so, uh, you know, coming out of this darkness, and I do see here, this is dark, right? And it has some shadow, and the moon is illuminating it from the back. So it is dark here, but we do have this contrast of, um, it looks like a ruined, to reconsider. All right, reconsider. This card suggests that what you are hoping for or trying to achieve in the way that you are currently approaching it might not be the best outcome for you. Think again and reconsider a different option. Holy shit. So that just like summed up the beginning of like the dream here, right? Um, so what was it saying? The way that you're currently approaching it. So uh, for your changing role, let's see. A deeper fulfillment. Let's see. It says something about the way. Oh, here we go. Can put uh, can put forward different approaches to your current life situation. So this is about packing in my dreams and not being able to find something, being annoyed, frantic, or frustrated. Right. So looking at something in a different way, approaching it in a different way, instead of being uh, frustrated at yourself or at your child for the racket that is going on, you have to take a different approach and come out of this darkness. What are your other options? Okay, I want to see if I can find this ruin in my notes. Um, okay, well, don't really see it there. I think I have another ruin book here too. Okay, and I can't really find one that's exactly matching here. Um, this one looks very similar, but not exactly. So let's just read it. Hag, Hagalaz, eight, which is infinity, your manifestations, what you're trying to accomplish, what you want, your dreams, your aspirations, your vision, uh, involuntarily suffering, sudden loss, affliction, breakup, eliminates all forms of self-destruction and old habits. Yep. That's exactly it right there. Right? And this is self-destruction, right? We did have self. This is self, the self. So... 
I do feel like this is your inner child here. Um, what was this? The eternal, eternal child, right? And I did say that too. The eternal God, the child within you, the God within you. And how you're taking care of yourself and what you are thinking and what you are doing to accomplish your dreams and your goals. Even with the mental illness that you have, with all this worry that you have, with all the struggles that you have, with your autism, with your dyslexia, with your learning abilities or lack of learning abilities to become the star born, to crack out of that shell, to come out of the darkness, to see the God within and how powerful you are and how beautiful you are. Do not worry, reconsider the way that you are thinking about something, the way that you have been taught. And just keep moving forward towards your passion. Okay. Woo! That was quite powerful. Um, yeah, that really felt like it was coming through from source. Um, there is a, a, a huge message here. Okay, about being humili humiliated. And having some patience with yourself. Coming out of that darkness. Shining your light. Lighting your candle. Being clear. Be a clear and open channel. For the, the messages that are coming through. Okay. I really feel like you need to meditate a little bit, um, calm some of your emotions, some of your frustrations, let it go. Give yourself pure love, right? We started off with the pure love and let go and ground yourself and nurture yourself. Take care of your children. Take care of your inner child. Because I feel like um, nobody else will. Even though we do have a message of that longing for external help. And feeling like you're a little lost. Because you don't have that external help. So all you have is yourself. All you have is God. All you have is that inner child. You know, and if this is about an actual child that you have, it's about learning from that child and teaching that child in a loving way and not making them feel alienated not humiliating them. Because of their errors. Or your error. Okay. Learn to have patience. Things happen over time. Okay. Thank you for being here for this read. Beautiful family. I love you. Uh... Like I said, please subscribe, like, share, um, really support each other, support me, support yourself in all that you do. Okay, I will see you on the next reading. Thank you. I want to thank you and our angels for being present for the messages that have come through in this reading. 
If you found this to be helpful, please like and share this content so others can benefit as well. Seek the subscribe button and don't forget to get notifications so you never miss a reading. The more love you share, the more love you receive. And you can find more love right here in these other videos. For more information about this channel, personal readings, swag, and donations, check the links in the description box.